Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Go inside the vehicle, open up the hood. Get our drain bucket in place to catch up and dispose of the coolant properly. You can either drain the coolant from the lower radiator hose attached to the radiator, or you can remove the hose clamp and the hose from the top here from the engine, and then direct the hose down into the bucket, which is what I'm gonna do. Clamp would be the same in the bottom one. I'm just using some slip joint pliers. So if you squeeze it just the right way, it's got a little lock, it'll lock together. I can slide it down. Reach down and work on getting that hose off. I always do this when the vehicle is cool. It's gonna come gushing out here. To remove this plastic shield that's in the front of the engine compartment, there are 10 clips. One, two, three, four, five, 10. Take a small flat bladed screwdriver or trim clip tool and pop them up to, lo to loosen them. And you need to go in like this, pull them out. If the middle comes out, it's okay. And then this is this rubber seal is clipped in here. You can just kind of pop it out. Use a small flat bladed screwdriver, just pop it up. Use a trim clip tool. These may break when you're taking them out. You might want to have some new ones on hand. If the middle comes out, it just pushes right back in there. Just repeat that for all the clips. These ones are a little trickier because they're deep inside here. Let's try to get this in here and prime up. along and do the same for all of them. This should just lift right off now. And then we'll put it aside. There's six T20 Torx bolts or Torx screws on the top of the radio support that hold the bumper on. I'm going to remove those. Top of the bumper is loose. We're going to lift the vehicle up to about waist high. You can take the bumper off of the car in the ground, but this will make it easier for us and easier to show what we're doing. We use a seven millimeter socket, an extension, and a ratchet. There are two seven, mil seven millimeter uh, bolts here. I'm going to remove them. They're holding the bumper to the fender. Just kind of tilt the wheel in. You may need to do that. You're going to repeat this for both sides of the car. Two T20 Torx screws that are holding the fender liner to the bumper. Got all the bolts loose. We kind of tug on the bumper and see it starting to come loose. Just repeat this for the other side. For both sides, remove the two T20 torques. 
On the bottom of the fender liner where it connects to the bumper. It's the 10 millimeter bolts on each side of this little bracket, so the front bumper on. Remove both of those. Well, this bracket was already broken, but you would take this bolt out. Same from the other side. Bumper clips into brackets, so I'm just going to pull on it, pull it out of the clips. Sometimes you have to give it a, a good tug. Just go all the way right along the edge. I'm going to do the other side now, the same way. I'm going to support the bumper. Just like that. Pull it away from the vehicle. There are fog lights. Our front marker lights, we're going to unplug those. We'll do the same for both sides. We'll put our bumper aside. To remove this front support, there are two bolts on each side on the top, and then a single bolt on each side on the bottom. We'll start with the top two bolts. We'll use a 10 millimeter socket, extension and ratchet. Remove these, put those aside. This will lift right off. There's a rubber air guide on each side of the radiator. You need to unclip it. It's got three of these metal style push clips. I'm gonna use our trim clip tool, kind of slide it under there, just sort of pop it off. Kind of one-way clips, you just kind of, kind of work them off. Oops. Off a little bit of force. If they get mangled, don't worry about it. They'll push right back on and lock in place again. I'm just gonna repeat that for all of them. That one there. Same for the one that's kind of in the middle here. It's hard to get to. This air guide also held in with two plastic clips. I'll prime out the small bladed screwdriver. Use the same the one on the bottom. Now it's also hooked into this bottom one here with this tree clip. Slide this all the way out. Just because it clips around the radiator, it's gonna be in the way when I'm trying to take the radiator out. Put that aside so we can reuse it. I'm gonna repeat these steps for the opposite side. This air guide cannot be removed because it goes around the AC lines. You don't wanna disconnect those you'll release all of your Freon and you won't have any working AC. So just push it out and aside. And those will just, this air guide will just stay there while we replace the radiator. Now remove the hood latch out of the way. These are 13 millimeter bolts. Just using a ratcheting wrench or you can use a socket and a ratchet. Remove both bolts that are holding it on because the radiator will need the extra clearance to take it out. We'll unclip the electrical connector. Just take some needle nose pliers, push it in, pop that out. Lock the connector, pull it apart. You can just lay it aside for now. Use a 10 millimeter socket, ratchet extension. Remove these bolts holding on the top radiator mounts. Pull those off, put them aside. Same for the other side. Use some slip joint pliers to remove this clamp. There is a lock on it, so when you squeeze it together, you get it just right. They'll lock. You can 
push it back. It'll lock it in the open position. I need to move it off the radiator now. Just work it back and forth. Pull it right off. Okay. Need to get this one off too. It's just a barbed fitting with the hose on it. Pull that right off. So now our radiator is pretty loose. It is snapped into the condenser for your air conditioning. You be very careful with this. You don't want to damage it. If you puncture it, your Freon will escape and you won't have any air conditioning and you'll have to have it professionally replaced because you need specialized equipment to deal with air conditioning. So it is clipped in at the top on both sides and then just slides into some pins. So we're gonna unclip it, do the same for both. You may need pliers. It's a very tiny rock stuck in here. And that was preventing them from being pushed together. So you're not going to have too much forward movement on those, but it is sitting in little grooves. So I'm going to gently pick up on it. Do the same for both sides, kind of evenly, just like that. Don't want to overstress the lines. That air guide. That air guide got held up on there. All right. That's totally loose. So the radiator is loose. Before I pull the transmission cooler lines off, I took a latex glove, cut a couple fingers off of it. I have some cable ties ready. I'm going to put those over the ends of the lines so they don't leak everywhere while they're off of the radiator. There's a little rubber cap that's gonna come off. Just kinda pulls straight off. And then inside of there is a metal spring clip. I'm gonna use a pick and pull it out. Just like that. Kinda pry it outwards. Try not to drop it. Take it right out. Put that aside, I don't want to lose it. And this should come right out. Just like that. And now I'll take one of the glove fingers. Just put it over the opening. This is the top one, so it's less likely to be leaking. The bottom one will probably leak a lot. Cable ties around it. This keeps dirt and stuff out of there and also keeps it from dripping all over the place while you change the radiator. And remove the lower transmission cooler line. Pull that rubber cap off. Okay. Run with our pick. Pick the metal clip out. Right out. I'll put it aside. This is plastic clip just kind of springs open, and I'll just push it out. And actually turn it to the side like that. And I can work on getting it out of the radiator. I'll just kind of wiggle it back and forth. Come out and some fluid might come out of the radiator. And I can actually move this quite a bit, so let me pull it up and I'll put a glove on, glove figure, glove finger onto it. Slip it down. That will sit there. So those are off of the radiator now. Unplug the cooling fans. There's a lock here. I'm going to push that in. Let's separate the connector. Now fold the radiator kind of backwards. The lower hose is still attached, so it's going to come out with it. Pull it up off the mounts. Try not to pull it with the condenser. It's got 
hung up on the plastic shield over here, the air guide. Pull these out of the way. Lift that up. Now, it is caught on the lower radiator hose. So I'm just gonna pull it up, out of the way. This is our radiator and cooling fan assembly we pulled out. We're going to separate these parts on the bench. The cooling fan shroud actually has two small clips, one on the bottom and one on the top. We use a small flat bladed screwdriver, they're just a push in clip. We'll gently pry it up. It's okay if the center part comes out. Pop the middle part out. Just push it back together, we'll reuse those. Do the same for the other side. Shroud is held to the radiator with two 10 millimeter bolts, one on each side and the top, and then it snaps into these clips in the bottom. So use a 10 millimeter socket, extension, and ratchet, remove these. Just kind of slide it up off those tabs. A couple things we want to take off this to use on our new radiator. We're going to remove the lower radiator hose. So we use some slip joint pliers. The clamp will lock just like the other ones. That sparked. Pull it up over the hose and pull it right off the radiator. Put that aside. I'm going to reuse it. I took the radiator out of the vehicle. There are these rubber plugs that it sits on in the lower radiator support. This one's stuck to the radiator, the other one's stuck in the car. So just make sure that these are either stuck to your radiator or they're stuck in the car because otherwise you're not going to be able to mount the bottom of the radiator in the vehicle. So I'm going to take this one off and I'll go put it back in the car. I'm going to remove the radiator cap so we can reuse it. Just unscrews. There's also this little air guide, just unclips from it. I'm going to reuse this. Okay, I'm going to reuse this clip. Let's get some barbs on it, push through. Just going to carefully work it out. Try to save it to reuse it. Put a rust penetrant on here. Let's help it slide out of there. That can be reused. Here's our original radiator from a vehicle, and a brand new one from 1AAuto.com. Same exact dimensions, same exact style. It's got some protective caps over the lower and upper radiator opening. It also has protective caps over where the transmission cooler lines go. This radiator has the exact same mounting points for the top and the bottom. It'll fit great and work great in your vehicle. Install our new fan shroud onto our new radiator. down this way and clip down and push it in and push it in and reinstall the original bolts it's just a metal threaded uh, insert and then a plastic mounting point on the radiator so don't over tighten it. Just bring it down, feel like it tight, then you can stop. Do the same for this side. Okay. And reinstall those little clips at the top and bottom. So this actually says on it radiator. This is going to go on the lower part. I'm just going to wipe it down, put it right over. That 
was roughly in that area. Pull the clamp down. Trying to line it up where it was. Just do that, pry it down, it'll snap into place. And now it's locked on. Reinstall the radiator cap, just the reds back on. I'm gonna leave these blue caps on for now. That way nothing gets inside there while we're trying to install it. I'm gonna clip this air guide back on. It just clips right over the edge of the radiator. And reinstall this line clip, just push it right in. Now we're gonna reinstall the radiator, carefully slide it into the opening. I'm just keeping an eye out for all the lines that are in here and the condenser. I'm gonna feed the lower radiator hose inside here so it's out of the way. Slide it down. I'm trying to line up the radiator in the lower mounts. Condenser is on the wrong side of it, so gently pull the condenser out. Pull the radiator up at the same time. Slide it into place. I'm going to slide the condenser into the lower hooks. And I've got it sitting over on this side. And then it's going to sit down in. And it can clip to the radiator. Just push it in, both sides. Just like that. Reconnect the transmission cooler lines. Lower one. All right. I'm going to take that blue cap off that's down there. And these have a round lip on them, and that should snap right into that metal clip. It'll clip when it's in place. Then this one fits into this plastic clip just like that. And take the rubber cap that was covering it and slide that back down. Put that in place. Do the same for the top one. Take the blue cap off. I want to bring this up plastic cover. Clip it right into place. Just like that. Put the cap back on it. Snap that into the clip. Plug the electrical connector in. Install the upper radiator hose, pull the rubber cap off, the hose in position, get the clamp roughly where it was, and hold it in place, unlock it with a flat bladed screwdriver. Now it's locked on, pull overflow, and get reattached in this barbed fitting right there. Reinstall the upper radiator mounts. Get them lined up where I can see where the, the bolt outline was before. And they're just going into little metal inserts into plastic, so I feel like it tight. I'll stop. Do the same for the other side. Install the air guide on the driver's side. I'm going to slide it up from the bottom. Kind of guide it in here. Just 
just like that. Over that mount there. Over the mount that's in the middle. And the one on the bottom. This came out over here. Put the push clips back in. Put through the rubber first, up into the bumper beam. Push that in. Don't forget this one down here. So that has to come up and it pushes in through here. So reinstall, reinstall these little locking washers. You just kind of push over. You do the same for both sides. Reattach the air guide on the other side as well. And reinstall hood latch. Plug it back in. Click when it's in place. Push the harness back in where it was. Put the hood latch back on. You can see the dust outline, the dirt outline where it was. Line it up roughly where it was. And then you can also see the outline of where the bolts were. need be, you can adjust it up, down, left and right afterwards. Tighten this down. Now reinstall this plastic bumper support. Underneath the hood latch, sit it in place. caught on the this rubber part so I'm gonna lay it on top of it that's better install the top bolts do the same for both sides install the lower bolts the bolts on both sides and we'll just tighten them down they're just metal inserts in the plastic of this upper front support so we're not going to go too tight. We'll tighten up the bottom one. We'll do the same for the other side. We'll reinstall the bumper. Don't forget to reconnect the turn signal lamps. Both sides. Just snap them into the connector. It'll click when it's in. Let's put the bumper back into place. up into the bracket, lift it up and in, get both sides set, just clip it into place. all the bolts, screws, and clips. Your bracket isn't broken here. This one's broken, but you reinstall the 10 millimeter bolt. That holds the bottom of the bumper on. And do the same for the other side. So reinstall the two torque screws. Do the same for the other side. Reinstall the two seven millimeter bolts or screws. One had a wider head, one had a smaller head. The smaller head one was towards the inside. Reinstall the six torque screws along the top of the bumper. Reinstall the lower radiator hose to the engine. Put that right in place. It'll go on right to that, that little stop right there. 
get the clamp roughly where it was. Take a flat bladed screwdriver, pry it down. There it is. Snapped into place and it's sealed up. Remove the radiator cap, just unscrews. We were gonna, we're gonna fill this system at the radiator so that we're not, you could fill it through the overflow bottle. It would just take a long time to fill. So I'm gonna fill up the radiator and then I'm gonna top off the overflow. You could use a regular funnel. We've got a special funnel we're gonna use, but it doesn't really matter because it will pressurize and bleed through the overflow and we'll do that after we fill it. We use a 50-50 mix of the appropriate coolant, which is Dexcool, and fresh water. The line is on the back of the reservoir. I filled the radiator. I'm going to remove the funnel. I might lose a little bit of coolant. It's almost topped off at the cold level. I'm just going to let a little coolant in. There it is. Put this back into our bottle. Now remove this and replace our radiator cap. Our radiator is filled to the top, which is where, right where I want it. Now I need to run the vehicle, check for leaks, and then bleed the system. I'm gonna start the vehicle in a safe place to have it running, so outside. I'm gonna bring the RPMs up to between 20, 2,000 and 2,500 RPM until it comes up to operating temperature. Then we'll let it idle for three minutes, shut it off, let the vehicle cool, and then we'll recheck the coolant level and top off as necessary. After that, the job will be complete. Install the upper cover in the engine compartment. I'm gonna slide it under that ground point. It's gonna go over these rubber mounts here, both sides. Go under this weather strip. Same thing for both sides. Reinstall all the push clips. It's easier to push the clips in if you pull out the center part. This is the last one. And that is complete. Close your hood. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.